How's everybody's lunch so far? I think it is the best lunch in town, so I'm really glad that everybody's uh, taking advantage of it and settling in. For those of you at the back, I know you're still getting your food, but if you could just turn your attention here for just a moment, please. I've been asked to uh, do something that I'm uh, extremely thrilled to be, uh, to be asked to do, which is to present the annual Canadian Organic Growers Organic Pioneer Award. Without further ado, I would like to begin. I call my speech, No Bosses Here. Our recipient today, and I'm going to give the name so that that is out of the bag right away, but please uh, maintain, hold your back your applause until later. Um, our recipient today is Mary Lou Morgan. And I wanted to tell just a moment, or take a moment just to tell a little bit uh, about uh, a thumbnail sketch, if you will, of Mary Lou's past. Mary Lou Morgan lived in the country when her children were small on a property near the Pickering Airport lands that had an acre of asparagus. A neighbor taught her how to cut it and feed it over the winter. And that same neighbor also had bees, and he taught her how to have bees. Mary Lou started working then at a local health food store. She's told the story that a truck driver came in one day to the store who wanted to sell a new product and was willing to give the store a fridge to keep it in, and that was the beginning of Astro Yogurt. Another property that Mary Lou lived on with her family, it had a market garden. In fact, it was a very famous market garden because it formerly was owned by the famous cauliflower lady of the Stokoe Market. So you can see there's a wonderful pattern here of Mary Lou learning as she goes, and this is something that she continues to espouse to this very day. Mary Lou started selling corn at the local health food store and was busy hauling corn to the market every day while trying to work around the school bus schedule and getting the kids off of school in the morning. Times changed, she moved back to Toronto with her family and her next job was at Lifestream Food Distributor. When Mary Lou was hired back then, she was the third employee of the Toronto operation. Then there was a job at the Bay, a little health food store on the main floor which Mary Lou turned her attention to, and of course, it would seem effortless to others, but of course, it required a great deal of effort, managed to double the sales for them. Then from there, Mary Lou went to the legendary Baldwin's Naturals, a, uh, a market, yeah, a pure Kensington market. And the owner of that shop at that time was young, but he decided he wanted to retire. So he sold the employees little pieces of the business, and he went out and bought a farm. Well, not too long after that, he decided to come back. And when he came back, he said to them, I'm the boss. That did not sit well with the people who had been minding the shop in his absence, and it proved to be very competent at managing this, this very healthy enterprise. So the employees left all of us in protest and did what every enterprising young entrepreneurial group wants to do, which is to meet in parks and strategize to figure out how to start a business of their own. While they were strategizing, they discovered a BBC documentary called The Mondragon Experiment. They also at that time discovered a book called No Bosses Here. In fact, what they had stumbled upon was a blueprint for a worker co-op. And that, my friends, was the beginning of the big carrot natural food market, which I'm sad to say is a story for another time. What I'd like to do now is talk a little bit more about some of the specific accomplishments. For more than 40 years, Mary Lou has experimented with ways to increase access to good food, good affordable food, in a way that empowers and educates individuals. Her career has encompassed working in an organic greenhouse, working for a natural food wholesaler, offering a cookbook that promotes healthy in-season cooking, and in 1983, as I mentioned, she was a co-founder of the Big Carrot Natural Food Market, which has turned out to be a very successful natural food store, organized as a worker cooperative. From 1991 to 2005, Mary Lou worked for Food Share here in Toronto, Canada's largest food security organization. She created and managed a complex web of social enterprises, including the Good Food Box, supplying produce to Toronto schools, also the Field to Table Catering Company, the Toronto Kitchen Incubator, and a community service program for homeless and immigrant youth. Now that she's retired, 
Mary Lou works tirelessly as a consultant to food and agricultural organizations. And in fact, she manages the Carrot Cash, a small but mighty organization which grants and loans money from the profits of the real estate of the Big Carrot. In the past eight years, Carrot Cash, under Mary Lou's leadership, has granted over $1.2 million to 200 organizations stretching from coast to coast, invested $65,000 in non-voting shares in cooperatives, and loaned and received back over $243,000. All of these organizations are working to grow the local organic food sector and sustain the web of connections and infrastructure necessary for long-term success. Social justice and community involvement are part of the mandate. Mary Lou has won the Jane Jacobs Prize for citizens who are engaged in activities that contribute to the city's vitality. She's received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Canadian Health Food Association and was honored in 2002 as Woman of the Year by the Women's Culinary Network. Mary Lou very modestly claims that her accolades these days come from her grandchildren, and I'm not surprised. But I believe that this award is testimony that her accolades come from far and wide. Mary Lou's ability to think critically and creatively allow all of us to benefit from her experience and her advice. She encourages us to make connections of all kinds. Connect a farmer with a buyer. Connect a student with a mentor. Connect communities through food. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I would like to present the 2012 Canadian Organic Growers Organic Pioneer Award to Mary Lou Morgan.
but I was really fortunate that I worked in an environment where every time I came up with a crazy idea, the executive director of Henry Field said yes. I saw through my work how uh, growing, harvesting, handling, cooking, respectfully treating, delivering food, fresh fruit and vegetables that were locally grown, just could bring joy to individuals and create community. When I retired from Food Share in 2005, I got a phone call telling me that, oh, there was money now to start giving away in care cash. And that's what I have been doing for the last six years, developing uh, some application forms and uh, trying to figure out who will be successful. And uh, it, is, it is a wonderful job. The best part of the job is actually receiving these weird and wacky ideas from young people. People with passion and forethought. People who can actually see things through. This time, an experienced orchardist asked for money to plant a rare fruit and tree orchard a uh, fruit and nut orchard that will only mature in 25 years. Another farmer turned a swimming pool into a 4,000 square foot root cellar. In Montreal, young people make uh, and deliver on bikes meals on wheels to seniors. And they ask for money because they now want to grow the food that goes in and meals on wheels rather than buying it from the grocery store. And they're growing this produce on rooftops and on city property. Carrot Cash really likes to be there at the beginning of the projects. We were there at the beginning of Everdale Farm, the beginning of the craft program, the beginning of Farm Start, Planet Bean, Not Far From the Tree, and Zatoon. And this week, at the beginning of the Harvest Moon Cafe, in the Graduate Student Building in U of T. People are using food to build communities, to create employment for themselves, and to express their joy in simply living, or living simply.